What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we're doing the brake install on our Project 7.3 here. So this caliper is all stuck. This is awful nest. We did replace the brake hose already. Uh, hopefully that video you guys have already seen. We have new calipers here. We went with power stop. Uh, we have pads and rotors in there. So basically what we got going on here, we have the wheel off jacked up. We have a jack stand for safety and the two bolts here, let's see if uh, you guys can see this here. All right, this is the back side of the caliper. We have one bolt here and one here, and then basically the same thing down below. Those are this smaller one, which was 17 millimeters. Lord knows what yours are because by now all of these have been replaced on most trucks and some people use different sizes, but 17 for the little guy, that holds the piston, uh, the caliper itself onto the shoe and the bigger 21 holds the, I guess the brake shoe that mounts to the steering knuckle. So four bolts there, 14 millimeter for that guy there. Again, yours may be slightly different. So again, we since we already have a new brake hose here, we don't have to worry about that. We will need new copper washers, which my kit includes here from Power Stop. So we're gonna just break this loose and then we're not gonna, then we're gonna just snug it up. We're not gonna completely take this off. It should be really easy because I just had this off a week ago. As far as brakes, the pads themselves are actually still fine on this. Uh, well, fine loosely saying there's enough meat on them, but we're replacing everything. Uh, there's a bad shake on this when we do it, so. This is all gonna come off. We have our mini sludge in case the rotor doesn't wanna come off nicely. So anyway, we're gonna get back to taking those four bolts off and loosening that we're gonna loosen this first and then we'll take those four bolts off. So you wanna be careful cause you don't want this stuff to uh, break on there now fortunately and unfortunately <clears throat> this is so seized on here there we go A little tappy tap and it's off So I would have actually anticipated this being in worse shape than it is, uh, but it is stuck. So we're not going to be, we're not going to be trying to save this. What I like to do on the leaf spring trucks is I actually set it here on the leaf spring carefully. And that normally works pretty good. And the rotor came off nice. So one way to tell if it's stuck, is you see this is nice and easy moving for us this is not hard i see why it came off because they got some uh anti-seize on there we'll probably paint that up a little bit with some anti-seize just to make life easier but this is super easy to move when the other one was on there when the caliper was on there this was super hard to move if he ever had ball joints done again this i would replace this shield but for now it's not in terrible shape it's just clearly at the end of its life too all right, so we're going to get some anesthes. We're going to paint this up. We're going to get our new rotor out. And then we're going to start working. We're going to mount our shoe a while to this. And then we're going to work on our caliper. So we got a little anesthes here. And we're just going to paint some on the face of the wheel bearing here. So future times that this stuff has to come apart is nice and easy. And look at this rotor. That thing is sweet. Uh, I run power stop all the time, drilled and slotted rotors. These things are awesome. Um, they have theirs labeled front driver, front passenger. 
Uh, and as far as I know, it doesn't matter. But since they labeled them, I, I'm kind of anal about that and need to, need to do it. So this is the front driver one, all done. We're gonna grab the shoe that goes back here and we're gonna mount that up. Uh, they do have powder coated um, brake setup. So hopefully they stay looking nice for a while. So now these do come with new sliders, but they don't come with new bolts to hold it onto the truck. So those will be reused. I always take a look at mine, make sure that they don't need cleaned up or anything. They're in pretty good shape, so we're not gonna worry too much. Now Power Stop includes everything you need, new hardware. We have new copper washers, which we'll need to switch the brake hose over. Uh, literally the kit has everything you'll need to do this job. So very nice. Uh, I've used Power Stop stuff in the past and I've always had a good experience with it, so I highly recommend it. Uh, there will be links to everything you need down in the description below. So here we are now, we have our, like I said, this is a pretty easy job. I mean, I'm filming, we're at 18 minutes here and that's with me not really trying. That is, I did have the truck jacked up and the wheel off, so I had another three minutes for that, uh, being very generous there. So we have this on. One thing, sometimes I do put brake grease in between these metal adapters and the bracket. I didn't this time, but we will make sure to put some on the shoe itself we'll have plenty there uh, here's a good look this is how all of these little clips get oriented uh, all of them are exactly like that there's nothing different it's nothing special all four are exactly the same so we're gonna <clears throat> So from there, we're gonna grease up our brake shoe or brake pads and start popping them in. And we went with their uh, extreme severe uh, truck and tow brake pads. I've used these in the past, phenomenal brake pads. And here's what I love about Power Stop is they don't really cut corners in this part is you get the same stuff that's in each of those we have backups here. So we're gonna set these aside, especially cause these are literally the same brakes that go on my truck uh, and I'm gonna be doing mine. So just, it's nice to have extra. We literally have three trucks that have the same brakes in the family, Josh's, mine, and my dad's. So it's nice to have some of these on spare just in case. 
Now they do include their own um, brake grease, but it's not really a ton. I mean, it's nice stuff. I've used it in the past. They used to give you a little more than this. Uh, so we're just gonna use what I have. And again, we'll throw this to the side as extra. So here they are, nice, it, they really are super nice, uh, big, super duty, heavy duty brake pads here. Um, so what I like to do is I get the whole back here, and then I get, make sure to get these ears that actually, I make sure to get these ears up here that actually sit in the bracket to make sure we don't have any issues there. One other nice thing about Ford brake pads is they are literally all the same. Uh, you don't have to worry about one side on the side with the piston versus another side, that it's all the same. Now I will say this, I tend to be pretty generous in the amount of this stuff I put on, because um, why not? Um, the only thing you want to be careful of, don't get it on the brake pad itself. Just the ears there that actually sit into the shoe and on the backing itself. Now also in a pinch, uh, you don't necessarily need to do this. If you're in a hurry or something like that, or you know, don't worry, you don't need to do this. You can always go back and do it too. Uh, if you run out or you, for whatever reason, um, you don't need to like have a moment if you don't have all of this stuff ready. So and I, I have done it that way without it. Cause I didn't have it. And I, you know, when I was newer to learning how to work on vehicles, but uh, I, my preference is to have it. So one thing you want to make sure that this boot is on each of its ledges for the slider pin itself it latches on and on the cat on the shoe itself. And we're just going to clean this up a little bit because partially because I'm anal partially because even though it's going to happen no matter what the extra grease just attracts dust and crap we don't need it. So again, the other one, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to put it on this. You'll see the little lip up here when you're doing it. I'm going to put this on in advance and then we'll grease it up. Now guys, so these castings for a brake shoe are actually all the same driver and passenger. How you know which one goes on which is based off the bleeder valve. So we have our bleeder valve up here. That's how we know this one belongs on the driver's side because when you mount it up, you need that to be high or you'll never get all the air out of this piston. If it's low, as soon as brake fluid can come out, it's gonna come out down here. You'll never get all the air out. So then here's where our brake line hooks up. We'll leave this plugged for now until we're ready to switch that over. Now you'll actually see on the caliper, there's a flat where this slider pin will hit. It stops it from going. That's how you actually can tighten it on. 
So at this point, I love to give a good final like tightening of everything. So we're gonna start with the shoe and then we'll go to the caliper itself and then we'll make our final stuff, move our final stuff over. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't have my biggest biggest ratchet in the world, but it's a pretty decent size one, give you some leverage. You don't need to torque this thing all day long, but you definitely want to make sure it's make sure you have some pressure on it. That being said, everything does have a torque spec for a reason, so nothing wrong in looking up the actual torque spec to put it on there so you know that this is done right. And for a lot of things, I do do that on. Obviously, we're not doing that on this, but there are a fair amount of things I typically will look up torque spec. Because again, that is the proper way to do it. That being said, I guarantee no garage is torquing these to spec. One thing I almost forgot is on these years, there's these little clips that go in to your brakes. So you don't want to forget these. Like I almost did. About to switch this over so we have I put my one copper washer there, got my other one ready. We got a box down here to catch some fluid here. And brake fluid, nasty stuff guys. You do not want to mess around super long with brake fluid if you can avoid it. Plus you don't want to get any air in your line because then you got to bleed the whole system and that sucks. Okay, so one copper washer is going against our nut there. Put it in here. Our other copper washer on the other side. And now, now we are not completely done because we have to gravity bleed this yet. Uh, I have had good luck with gravity bleeding. Uh, a lot of times I don't even pump the brakes or anything like that. I just uh, open that up, let it gravity bleed, and normally I'm pretty good from there. So I'm gonna loosen up the bleeder valve, let that happen. Uh, we'll do the other side. Uh, I'm not gonna take you guys along with me for the other side. It's literally the same thing. We're just replacing the brake hose on that side too. So a little more work, but uh, like I said, there's a video on just replacing the brake line on this truck, so go check that out. Links to everything down in the description, guys, and I will do a separate video on uh, uh, setting the seating the brakes uh, exactly for everybody so everybody can see that stuff as well. There is a brake in procedure to all brakes, these come with very specific ones. Typically, what I do if I can, uh, if I don't have specific instructions, 
is I will uh, basically I'll do a few very light stops from moderate speed then I go up like say like maybe from 25 down to 5 miles an hour like three times and then I go up to like 45 down to 10 and then I get a couple of like 60 and I do harder brakes when I get up to that higher one is I'll start really um, hitting the brakes harder coming to a faster stop like 60 miles an hour down to 25 really quickly and repeat and I'll do that three times and then I try to drive for like 10 minutes uh, uninterrupted without hitting the brakes very little at all you want to be careful not to come to a complete stop if you can avoid it um, during the break-in procedure again it's not the end of the world if you do but try to avoid it so you can get that really heat the brakes up let them cool uh, rapidly with the driving and then uh, let it sit and you're good to go all right YouTube that's how you replace the brake calipers on this truck there's probably a million videos out there of this I probably have put three or four out myself uh, but since we're doing it to the truck I wanted to take you guys along and see if I can't make a better video than I have in the past so hopefully this is a good one links to everything you need down in the description tools uh, brake fluid everything affiliate links down in the description go check that out if you're looking for turbos don't forget to check out my turbo sponsor turbo time USA six obros for five percent off go check out the guys at blessed performance six obros again for ten percent off their tuning their branded tuning not all their tuning just the stuff that he's making don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment down below, guys. I'll see you in the next upload.